here's the shed. It's full of junk and full of stuff from last season. This looks more green in the picture than it really is. We still have some uh, hanging stalks. This box fan runs 24 hours a day, year round. And this double window fan is set to go on at 70 degrees or higher. And we go out to the side yard. The two plants in front are Chillard's White Angel Leaf. And they're looking pretty much like a burley. And the rest of this row is um, Colombian Garcia and as you can see it produces some really lovely textured wide leaves there's my hand here so you can see how big it is and they uh, last year did not um, blossom until way way late in the season and I got no seed and this year, it's now July 17th, and um, there's just no indication that it's about to produce blossoms. This bed is um, long red. Beautiful, huge leaves. And I expect the plants to get about, oh, another two feet taller before they finish up the season. And this is a small bed of eight plants that I use for uh, test grow outs. And what we have here is uh, Dutch Ohio. It's been bagged. This is my messy little herb garden. Here we have 
what was supposed to be a bed of um, Machu Picchu Havana and most of it is but the um, the last six plants here are more um, chillards and as you can see the leaf size is substantial and again it just looks like burly the bottom leaves show yellow modeling and uh, the colors don't really come out great in this but um, they're not really white, so we'll see what happens with that. This little bed, which I may need to just stop using for tobacco, um, enjoys the shade of a rather large maple tree and the roots of the tree intrude into the, the bottom of this bed. Uh, these four are um, rather dwarf um, Havana 322. The next cluster are my surviving Delhi 3666. Here we have um, the uh, Grin Unknown number 10, which appears to be Ismir Ospas. You can see the recurve on the margins of the leaves. And if you look at the oracles, they form absolutely flat, straight, right angled descenders on the stalk, and that's typical of this Mirospas. They were to be compared with uh, Ismir Karabaglar, which was well known, and the only two survivors are these, and they're growing okay, not great. There you can see the um, the onions here aren't particularly suffering from the the uh, intrusion of the maple tree roots. There's a tree again, and um, they get a little bit of shade in the mid af mid to late afternoon from this dwarf wine sap apple tree. This is an experimental bed, usually, and um, I just threw some orphans into it. And we can compare them. This was a, uh, a reject Vuelta Bajo. The larger one is uh, Dutch Ohio and is thriving. This one is a um, Another example of um, Chillard's White Angel Leaf, Abano, Colorado. That taller one is Vuelta Bajo. They're all stunted. And these two are uh, Red Rose. Here we have Vuelta Abajo, and the plants are adequate in height, 
Uh, the leaf size this year has been smaller than in the past, but um, they'll put out some decent tobacco. This is my cukes and squash, and if we wander over to this godforsaken end, this used to be green beans, but the the deer have grazed them down to nothing but stalks. Here's my next bed. Uh, half of this, this half is red rose, and these are robust and uh, lovely. I've picked a gazillion hornworm eggs out of this particular area. And this half is Havana 322. For a, a Spanish type, the leaves are really very large. We'll go up to the next bed. On the end here, we have eight uh, plants of um, Habano Colorado. Uh, slightly more pointy than, than most um, Havana types. These pitiful three plants are all that's left of an attempt at uh, growing Bahia, Brazil Bahia. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but um, the stalks tend to be floppy as they get taller. And this one's starting to tip a little bit. This is the one robust exemplar of um, San Andres. There's a second one behind it that's uh, starting to do better but it's much smaller. Um, I'm hoping to get some seed. These germinate very poorly or in the past have germinated very poorly and had a high seedling mortality rate. Here we have the resurrected golden burly elder and this is my elder Dominican Olor and let's see if we can see the cro crookedy stalk underneath here there it is but it's turning into a real plant These are my grapes. I have uh, white Ontario here. And um, then uh, purple um, buffalo. For weeks on end, I was removing the Japanese beetles by hand and stomping on them one to two hundred of them every day and I finally got fed up with that when one morning I came out and everything was just carpeted in Japanese beetles so I sprayed them with, um, with permethrin and there's a Japanese beetle as we speak that is still alive. This is my next door neighbor.
and I enjoy um, conversing with the goats every now and then. Here we have Florida Sumatra, which I've grown year after year for a sun-grown wrapper. And it sort of looks okay from this view, but if we take it around to the side, oop, that's jabbed by the blackberries, you can see that the plants on this end are stunted and the ones on this end are not. And I believe the underlying problem is not the roots but the shade, the mid-afternoon shade from this white pine. little apricot tree that's a baby and I've got two um, two pear trees that are trying to give me a crop this year about once every three years I get a decent crop there's the other pear tree also has a nice crop hanging on it it should be ready to pick in about three weeks or so And you make the circuit, you can see off in the distance the uh, Colombian Garcia and the two uh, squashed down hazelnut plants. My overgrown asparagus. And here's a token clearing of the bed. And that's all the tobacco. And we'll do a quickie here of um, my blackberries. Now these are great big things. Peas have finished off for the season. I have to pull those out. This is pathetic uh, raspberries here and I will probably mow these to the ground at the end of the season and then let them grow back again fresh um, this is my bed of tomatoes and um, this is enjoyed nibbling by rabbits they find the low-hanging fruit and take bites out of everything they can reach. Perhaps you can see the tomatoes that have been chewed up. Now, what I usually do is, is break off the ones they've eaten that, that they've taken a bite out of, leave it on the ground below the tomatoes, and then they'll, they'll feed on those for several days. Heaven knows why they prefer green tomatoes to ripe ones, but they seem to. Um, I have had the deer munching on some of my tomato plants. It's a crowd looking across the road. At a cow pasture. This is my old farmhouse. And that's the tour of everything.